Uh, hello, uh, welcome to uh, uh, my open office, Apple Harvest open office hour on uh, Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. I'm going to run through a, a quick uh, presentation here uh, just to give you an update on how things stand. First of all, uh, the upcoming weather forecast for the week is dry um, with the breeze picking up in the afternoon, but the mornings centered around 6 a.m. are going to be quite calm. If you are anticipating putting retain on apples, um, those are going to be good times to do that first thing in the morning any day this week coming up. Uh, avoid putting it on during the uh, warmer part of the day and of course when it's windy because good coverage is essential. So that's a real nice forecast for putting on retain if uh, you're in an application window. So a little more on retain application to apples. Um, retain is dose dependent. The more applied, the more, uh, the more drop control and effect on fruit maturity you're gonna have. The label rate is one to two pouches per acre. That can be fine tuned depending on the time of application and the variety. I'm not gonna go into too many details on that. There's plenty of information, for example, in healthy fruit and elsewhere. Um, you can begin applying retain any time from 30 days uh, before anticipated harvest down to seven days before anticipated harvest. It has a seven day pre-harvest interval. For Macintosh, which I'm most familiar with, I think about three weeks before harvest uh, is a good time to put it on before, before anticipated harvest, which is kind of the start of harvest. Probably looking here at the second week in September. So this week, I think, is about uh, three weeks before that time. So I think that's why it's a good time to apply to Max. Um, if you want to wait longer, the only danger of that is once the, the train has left the station, so to speak, you might have less drop control. However, you can delay retain application and have less impact on color development. But like I said, you may not get as good an effect. Um, you know, Max respond to retain very well. It's a very good stop drop material for Macintosh. Um, can extend the harvest. You probably don't want to put it on all your Max. Max that you don't apply retain to, you can uh, pick early. The Max that you do apply retain to, you can delay harvest. Um, it's also useful on Gala and Honeycrisp, um, John of Gold, uh, Golden Delicious. We don't really worry about Granny Smith and Brayburn too much. But again, details, application details. Um, the healthy fruit from two weeks ago, it was August 4th. Has a lot of information from Dwayne Green on how to apply retain to specific varieties. Keep in mind that um, light crop loads um, mature early. There's a lot of trees out there with lighter crop loads this year. That fruit's going to mature early. So keep an eye on that. I already mentioned the weather, the temperature, humidity, early morning is ideal. You know, you can put it on the evening too, it'll work just fine. But um, early morning is the, the most preferential. At least three, four, five, six hours of drying time, you know, it's, that's not gonna be a problem this week. Don't forget your adjuvant organosilicone surfactant, uh, six to 12 ounces per 100 gallons. Um, spray volume, 100 gallons per acre is ideal. You need good coverage with Retain. It only acts locally. Um, you can go up to 2x, but I wouldn't recommend going any more concentrate than that. And uh, 100 gallons per acre on most orchards is, is good. Retain does not cause any phytotoxicity, but um, avoid putting uh, Retain on close to calcium chloride. It's the organosilicone surfactant that can cause some phytotoxicity if you're not careful with that. So that's just briefly a couple quick points on how to use Retain. I did do some apple maturity testing yesterday, Monday, um, August uh, was it, 17th. Um, and I looked at some early maturing varieties just to see where they might stand. This is Minnesota 55. Uh, we can't grow this. It's a club variety being sold as Rave. I understand Stop and Shop has it uh, advertised right now. In Minnesota, it can be sold as first kiss. Um, this apple has a tendency to drop, um, really would benefit from retain. They're, you know, the ones that are dropping obviously are quite ripe. The ones that are still on the trees, 
they're okay. I was kind of surprised by the bricks or soluble solids being so low. But anyways, this variety right now would, if we could have it, would normally be picked. And it's a really good apple. Um, I'll have something more on that later, though. Polar Red, you know, is one of the standard early apples. Um, you know, my feeling about Polar Red is meh. Go ahead and pick them if they're red. Customers will want them. Um, they're very clustered here at the UMass Orchard this year with a variable crop load. I think we have much better apples than Polar Red in this season. I wish we'd, uh, I wish we'd cut all those down, but <laughs> some people really like them. Ginger Gold is not ready, period. Um, it looks good. It's a little green still. This really needs another week or so, uh, I would say, to before you start to consider picking it. Um, it will become much better next week going through Labor Day. Sansa um, is a really good early season apple. Um, it's a difficult apple to grow. The trees have had problems over the years. We have a lot of cork spot, we believe, on our Sansa this year. It's a very nice early apple. It's a, a gala type apple on the sweeter side, not as firm as gala, but um, it's a good apple if you can grow it successfully and it's an early apple. So we should be picking these based on color right now. And finally, Zestar, um, a newer early apple arrival. Zestar is a, a, a very attractive apple when it colors up. I'm not a big fan of its, its flavor. I think it needs another week at least. I know some orchards are picking these. Um, I suspect they're economically ripe. However, to get good variety flavor, I think you should uh, wait another week at least to pick those. So I'll have another maturity report uh, next week when we meet for the open office hour on Tuesday, August 25th at noon. We'll see you then.